Welcome back, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, today, we are talking about staff appreciation. My name is Kristen Alexander, and we have Amanda Morrison here as well. We are URG's member relations specialists. Um, today, we have Jen Wilson speaking. Um, for those of you who don't know Jen, um, she has been training on a major yard management system since 2004. In 2006, she created her own company devoted to training and consulting salvage yards. The mission was to enhance a yard's comprehension of their yard management system product by streamlining processes and training. Armed with over 15 years of customer service and technical knowledge, she has a boots on the ground approach to looking at problems and processes. So Jen, thank you so much again for talking today and we look forward to your uh, presentation. Great, thanks Kristen, I appreciate it and I appreciate you or G having me back. Um, as most of us on this call um, realize, this was the week of you or G, the conference, um, and I'm sure a lot of us uh, take that opportunity every year between you or G and some of the other state and national conferences to get to meet up with each other, catch up and socialize since we all tend to um, be kind of in our own bubbles and right now uh, we are most certainly in our bubbles. Um, I changed up my topic for what I was going to speak at URG because I felt like this was very fitting for the time and for what's been going on. Um, I have done a presentation like this similar uh, several years ago and um, with everything that is happening in the world and with what is going on in our own businesses, sometimes we kind of take for granted one of the most vital resources that we have in our organization, our staff. So we're going to talk about staff appreciation. Um, Kristen already did a great little intro for me and who I am. Um, but generally speaking, again, been in the industry for over 16 years. I have a very much a user-centric approach to improvements, training, um, and, and just kind of that boots on the ground approach to making sure that we're getting the most out of our tools that we happen to have. Um, we, in the past, have done a partnership with EasySuite. We have a current partnership with Carbon Code, which was done by Evan Shantz for some third party add ons to, again, a YMS in the industry. Um, and again, my team tends to pretty much be pretty user focused in terms of interacting with everyone. Um, we do a lot of new hire training. We do a lot of just process improvement and for people getting the most out of their YMS in the first place. So that's kind of who we are. And again, to just kind of tag off of what Kristen was talking about. Um, so employee appreciation. So this is one of those things where more often than not, uh, it's kind of scarce in some company cultures. Um, it's one of those things where it shouldn't be reserved for one day. It's not like your birthday where I was like, oh, presents, I get my cake, I get party, I get to go out to dinner. Um, the reality is, is employee appreciation should be a company culture um, shift. It should be something that's integrated with the way that you manage, the way that you interact with your team, the way that your management staff interacts with the team, because your employees really are your most precious asset. You know, they do your sales calls, they do your inventory, they pull parts in all sorts of climate and weather, heat, cold, ice, rain, you name it, they do it. And some of them do it with a smile on their face and a skip in their step. Uh, some do not. And a lot of that can definitely be indicated from the way that we as management or we as owners um, go ahead and interact with the people that we should appreciate and that we should value because those are the people that build up our businesses and make our companies what they are, and especially the culture that we are working in. More often than not, people are a motivated in two different ways, either intrinsically or extrinsically. Now, our sales staff, more often than not, are very motivated by competition, money, achievement, selling the highest sale of a motor for the month. Um, they love to be rewarded that way. Um, and that's definitely an extrinsic kind of motivation and reward process. Um, for others, someone like myself even, um, I'm an intrinsic motivator. I get extremely excited about watching the light bulb turn on in someone's face when they're like, oh, I got it. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love that. Or having someone's business be vastly improved because we were able to assess whether it be helping them with their new hires to get them on the ground and going or coming back and saying, hey, let's look at your processes. Let's see what's going on here and let's tweak them. Um, it, it is very rewarding to be able to see the benefits of others. And I think a lot of people in our industry do that um, in charitable causes. 
um, put things out in their communities because again, we do have, we all like to make money to put a roof over our head, food on the table. Um, however, we also find it incredibly motivating um, to be a part of organizations or even our own company being able to help others. So one of the things you definitely want to think about is what each and every one of your staff members there are motivated by. You know, everyone goes by their own little beat of a drum, and sometimes one person's motivation doesn't universal across your entire sales team. Uh, sometimes it is. You know, you could be fortunate enough to look at your inventory staff and realize that they all are motivated by the same thing. So part of this talk and part of this session is all about simple ideas to be able to go and build on both those kinds of personalities and how people do stuff. So to get this show on the road, we have a tendency to not give the verbal praise um, that is needed by most people. Um, it, you know, simply walking by and saying good job all half-heartedly and you know, not even acknowledging it really, just be like, oh, wow, that's good. They may not have even heard you. You know, if you've ever been home and someone's kind of watching TV and they're into a movie and they start trying to have a conversation with you, you have no idea what that person said to you. Um, think about that when it comes to your employees, you know, the accounting person that's, you know, knee deep and trying to get the books done for the month or get statements out the door. They're not paying attention to the fact that you walk in the office and started saying whatever it was that you said. Um, more often than not, when you're trying to praise someone, you want to make sure you have their undivided attention, that they know that you are talking directly to them, that they are the person that you value the most in this moment, because you need to be able to mean it and you need to be able to make them feel that you mean it. You are their coworker, you are their peer, you are their manager, you are their boss, you are the owner. And at the end of the day, the very simplest, I appreciate you, I'm grateful that you were able to do that, I appreciate that you went above and beyond, it goes a very long way, but you have to mean it. And you have to want them to know that you mean it. You know, sometimes I think in a family dynamic, people say, I love you. And it's like, oh, I love you. I love you. Love you. See you later. Love you. Love you. And it becomes kind of commonplace. But at the end of the day, sometimes you need to take that stop. You need to take that moment. You need to look somebody in the eyes and say, I value what you contribute to my business. I value what you do for me. There is nothing better to feel good when someone really genuinely looks at you and has a conversation to appreciate the efforts that you've made. And that's something that you can't put a price tag on. Now, right now in the current climate that we're in, that verbal praise, that appreciation, when some of our businesses are really having, um, I don't want to say distractions, but um, having some uh, interesting efforts in terms of sales, um, profitability, cutting labor, cutting hours, closing the door to communicate with um, customers outside, we need to be able to double our efforts in making sure that our staff and the staff that we have knows that we appreciate them and make sure that the job and the efforts that they're putting in are worthwhile. You know, there's a lot of people out there right now that are thinking on how they would rather be home with their family, their loved ones, and, and being shut in. And there are plenty of people that are like, no, I can't be shut in. I need to be out. I need to be about. We need to appreciate what others are giving us, and we need to appreciate what people are, are contributing to making everything still work. Um, again, engage your employees. Be honest. Be interested in them. If you ask somebody how their weekend was, you ask them how their vacation was, you ask them what they did last night, give them your time. Give them that five, ten minutes, and let them tell you about it. Be genuinely interested. If you're not interested, don't ask the questions. Don't take the time of yours or theirs just to babble on. You want to definitely engage them and find out a little bit about them. It's amazing the past experience that people have had or the hobbies and interests people have outside of work. You know, it's amazing on how that can feed into simple ideas of staff appreciation because knowing something about that person that gets them to tick what gets them all excited, gets them passionate about the job that they are doing and the life that they are leading can lead you into coming up with wonderful ideas about how to reward them, how to appreciate them, and how to sustain them long term. So again, engage them, be honest, be interested, and take note of what they tell you. Because honestly, you might think that 
having a barbecue in the spring and having everyone in their family show up is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but maybe that's not really what makes them tick. They don't want to haul their kids. They don't want to haul their spouse. They don't want to get together. They're like, I see everybody every day all week. This isn't really what makes me happy about being here. It's nice to hang out with everybody. It's fun to have a couple beers, but that's not really what makes me tick. I don't feel appreciated because you fed me food. You know, there are those that are always appreciative about food. You know, you buy lunch, <laughs> you have pizza, you do whatever. They're like, woohoo, yeah. Um, but again, engage your employees. Find out what makes each of them tick. Sometimes you need to even ask them, what is it that motivates them? What about them that gets them excited about being there and that they want to do that job for you? Suggestions. You know, we all like to think that we have the best ideas, that we know best, that we're in charge, that we're the manager, we're the owner, and no idea could possibly ever be better than ours. The reality is we're not always the ones in the trenches doing the job every day. Listen to suggestions and when warranted, implement them. What better feeling does it show your staff that you take their feedback, you take what is working and not working, and apply it to your structure, to apply it to your environment, to put those ideas out there. You know, I have, um, I have a yard who went and they actually have cafeteria equipment because they were doing these quarterly banquets for their staff. And they went and they were like, hey, we do it enough, like let's get this done. So they brought in hot tables and they've got all sorts of really cool setup to be able to go and have everyone be there on site, have the food stay at food safe temperatures and to be able to go and not only cater to the customers, but to cater to the staff because everyone is there. You know, there's a lot of people that have built new buildings and made a very specialized cafeteria office area that is got community announcements, family announcements, kids bring in their artwork and show it off. You know, it's, it's building that company culture to be able to build it out. And sometimes those suggestions come from the staff. Be like, hey, you know, I need more than a vending machine in the sales area because these people don't leave us alone. I'm trying to answer phones. They're waiting for their part. They want to gab instead. Can we get a TV? You know, can we get a popcorn machine? You know, so think about the suggestions that your staff makes, whether it be in safety equipment, you know, potentially how to dismantle a vehicle. You know, some people will drop the engine out of the bottom by dropping the subframe. Some people want to use cherry picker, take it out the top. It all depends on what you have as resources and what your staff thinks works for them and their peers. So listening to those suggestions, distributing them to your staff, putting them out there, implementing those ideas. There's a lot of people that do things in their personal lives that can impact our businesses. Taking into account what they do every day and how that applies to us is huge. And not only that, but if someone's idea is taken, put out there to the company, how wonderful does that person feel? knowing that they offered up a suggestion that changed the business that they work in. That's big. Uh, other simple ideas have to revolve around schedules. You know, right now, we, every company everywhere is looking for ways to keep staff on to make sure that the bills are paid, that the payroll is met, that people can come into work or show up for work or, you know, turn into remote work. But there's some positions in our company that that can't happen. You know, the dismantler can't exactly dismantle the car from home. Um, the salesperson could potentially work from home. The accounting people could potentially work from home. The inventory staff, depending on how they inventory, if they're inventorying by pictures or with a handheld device, um, you can end up having lots of opportunities at your fingertips for this. But you can also change what someone's work schedule is. You know, there are plenty of families that aren't the typical nuclear family, you know, partners with two kids doing their thing and a lot of it's divided homes and multiple parents and step parents and siblings and everything else and at the end of the day sometimes one of the best ways to appreciate somebody that's in your staff is to give them time that they need where they need that long weekend to take care of things on a Monday or a Friday or maybe end up having it split up where they work Monday Tuesday Thursday Friday but every Wednesday they have off because they need that break they're so full on for you and for the job that they're like spun like a top. They need to relax. They need to decompress. And we're not giving them a chance to do that. 
Um, we all love to think about the Monday through Friday, do what they got to do, and even some of you are open on Saturday. And, you know, being away from family, friends, community can be hard at times. And so there are definitely times where we want to be able to have that dynamic where we're giving our staff an opportunity to have a say appreciate that we have an opportunity to show them that their time matters to us that their time is valuable to us and how they apply that time you know there's been plenty of sessions and seminars over time that talk about and not to pick on sales but um, on how salespeople you know as much as they're answering the phones emails and chat all day long that you only get so many hours of actual productivity in each eight hour day um, and the same can be said for a lot of other people because we as humans need break. We need to be able to go and have interactions. We need to be able to shoot the shit with somebody and not just talk shop. So accommodating someone's schedule, trying to be a little flexible, letting people come in a little late to stay a little later, you know, or early and leaving a little early goes a long way in accommodating that person's personal life in addition to what they provide you for your work life. You know, we do take for granted that everybody would love to be underneath the same building, same roof, see eye to eye every day, Monday through Friday, eight to five, but that's not exactly how it works. We know at this point in time that we've all had to make changes and accommodate over the time, but sometimes it's like pulling teeth when people ask you for it. Sometimes we need to be able to say yes, especially if it's warranted and that we can do it. Another way to show appreciation for your staff is give them opportunities to either coach them, give them your time. You're their boss, their peer, their manager, their cohort. Give them your time. Let them cross train. Let them learn new skills, new knowledge. Make sure that they actually can fill in holes that are in your organization. There's a reason why small and mighty goes a long way for our industry. We have a tendency to be able to wear those multiple hats, but we also wear those multiple hats because people want to take a holiday. People might be sick. People might have to go take care of a family member. Maybe they need off for a little bit. You know, everyone has experienced people in their personal lives that have the unknown happen. And when the unknown happens, it's wonderful when everyone dives in and says, how can I help you? How can I make this work? How can I help you out? And part of doing that is making sure that people are trained adequately, making sure that people are cross-trained in different areas that interest them. So maybe if they're a salesperson, but they're interested in inventorying and they love cars and they're a car enthusiast and they go racing on the weekends and all this other stuff, maybe that's something that they're trained in. Maybe that's something you offer to them to give them an opportunity. Or better yet, you do enrichment seminars, you send them for management training, you give them skills training where you can actually send them to learn new things and to bring those skills back and let them teach to the crew. Let them teach what they learned. You know, come back and share that information with the rest of the team. You know, it doesn't have to be just sending them off, spending the money and saying, okay, did that help you? Yeah, it did, sure. Okay, so what'd you get out of it? Uh, it was good, it was good. Yeah, that was one. No, how about you tell me some of the highlights is there something that I can walk away with that, you know, we can all use that can benefit all of us? You know, right now, you've probably seen plenty of articles about cleaning house and doing your spring cleaning and enriching yourself and doing that or people twiddling their thumbs at home because unlike our industry, which is an essential business, we end up having plenty of industries that they're not essential businesses. They're closed. They're home. Those people are probably driving themselves crazy, watching nothing but TV and movies and trying to keep their kids homeschooled and under control. And the reality is some people are taking the extra initiative to do stuff in Coursera or different classes that they can find online from major institutions. But we also have plenty of things in business and even in our industry, to be able to go and educate others and to bring that information back in. URG and the conference that they provide every year is one of those key events that gives people in our industry a way to come back with wonderful ideas and they be able to say, ooh, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do all these fun things because we take all these lovely ideas from these training conferences and we come back and we say, how can I implement that? How can I put that out there to my team and how am I going to benefit from that? But you know what else? 
sometimes when you're doing those reviews with your staff and you're like, hey, how's it going? How's, you know, how's working for me? How's being part of this business? How's being part of this climate? I'm like, yeah, it's good. Well, sometimes it's also looking into that pet passion of theirs. Maybe training isn't just training for your business. Maybe it's something that they have a personal interest in and their staff appreciation is having you send them to something that lets them grow their skill set where you're showing, you know what, I value the job that you do for me, but you want to go to the Adobe Max seminar for the year because you want to go learn more stuff about graphics because you have fun making cool three-dimensional art. Um, I'm all for sending you for that, but I want to see what you make out of that. I would love for you to help my, you know, the next time we do a marketing piece. Let me see your skills as part of that. Maybe that's something we can kind of build into your repertoire. There are so many cool things that you can do simply with training and the things that we already know that they need, training on the YMS, training to be a loader driver. So when our loader driver is down, we got one. You know, there's so much that we can present to our staff to enrich them fuller, not only in our company, but in their personal lives. And again, don't take it for granted. Sometimes the first person you should ask is your staff. Find out what makes them tick. Now, I know that this image is blurry, but ultimately this was a note that a police officer received. And it was basically, in case you haven't felt it today, you are appreciated. In case you wanted to quit today, don't, you're needed. In case you haven't, and it kept going on, and basically, this police officer went and did community service for someone, helped them out. And, you know, our police forces and our armed forces and stuff, we all value the job that they do. They do some amazing things for us. But they also get beat up, literally and figuratively, verbally abused. They get stuck trying to keep calm, even when people don't want them to be there. And it can be very challenging for them. However, the point of this is that that handwritten note that someone took the time to have a card, to write out their thoughts, to put their feelings on paper, and to give it to someone else, a stranger perhaps, is huge. Viewing handwritten notes for sales, uh, people that were new hires, interviewing, we take for granted these handwritten notes. It's like a lost art form in some way where maybe your grandparent or your parent or your great grandparent was like, dude, that's all we did was pen pals and letters and thank you notes. Right now when people can't see each other, can't hang out with each other, this is when letters are coming back into style, right? But handwritten notes and being able to say that you care about somebody, there's not always a card from Hallmark that you can just go and purchase for $3. You kind of sometimes need to sit down and think about what is it that this person does that I value, that I have them here, that they're here in my company, that I not only hired them, but I also value what they're contributing to my business. What about them personally makes me excited to have them come in the door every day, besides the fact that I got a full crew? What is it about them that makes them tick that I value? So being able to go and do a handwritten note is lovely. I feel bad for my staff. I'm not a handwritten note person because my handwriting is atrocious. Uh, I'm lucky I can read it. So they get little like typed notes and different things like that. I do kind of send my commentary to them. I also give them my time. You know, we as owners, managers, peers take for granted time. Giving somebody your personal time is huge and when you're the boss and you're a manager giving them your one-on-one -on -one time is probably the most valuable thing that you can give them because your staff knows you're busy your managers know you're busy they know each other is busy everybody knows what kind of work that they've got to put in and so when you carve out that little bit of time, taking somebody to a lunch meeting, having a beer after work, being able to go and say, hey, oh, your kid's got a baseball game. I'll come to that. I'm going to come and check it out and, you know, encourage them and, and sponsor or play. It's amazing what giving your time is. Sometimes you get the layered face, like, what, what, what do you mean you're coming to my kid's game? I, I don't understand. You don't have kids while you're coming. Because I want to come and hang out with you. And this is important to you and you want to make it there and you talk about the games that your kid does and he's playing really well. I, I want to check it out. I want to see this up and coming rock star of an athlete. 
but we also take for granted giving our time in our workplace. You know, we run around passing our staff and being like, okay, cool, you got this? Great, 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 I gotta go. Um, where we're running off to auctions, we're running off to go and figure out the, the next, next event that's happening at our place. You know, how do we keep our sales numbers high? How do, we, how do we go and keep everybody motivated? How do we get everybody to be, you know, uh, hitting their sales goals? How do we get our inventory going? How do we buy cars in a tight climate? And where are we going to get those funds? You know, we're all kind of running around stressed and overwhelmed. And sometimes you need personally that break. But giving that break to somebody else that just needs to have five minutes just to talk, to shoot the shit, to talk about work, to talk about personal life, anything. If you just gave them one of the most important things you could give them, your time. And they already know that you're busy, but you gave it to them anyway. You carved it out just for them. And like the note, it's you on paper. It's your thoughts on paper. It's your time, your words, and your efforts. So as much as going out to a restaurant right now is not exactly happening, you might be swinging by the coffee machine, maybe you got a crew egg, maybe you're making a cup of coffee and say, hey, come on in my office, come shoot the shit with me, come take 15 minutes and let's just talk about what's going on. Because not only are you giving them your time, but you're showing you value them as a person, that you value what's happening with them. And again, you can't really put a price tag on either of those things. Feedback. You know, we have a tendency to do feedback from the top down. We're like, no, this is the way it is, my way, highway, too bad, so sad, get over it. Um, and sometimes that's the way it has to be. But more often than not, like I said earlier, our staff, they're the ones doing the job. They're the ones in the, just on the ground. They're the best they can. And if anything, they're the ones that have the suggestions. And again, you can implement them. But feedback can be so much more than just suggestions. Feedback can be, hey, who's got ideas for how we handle this? You know, what are, what are we going to do? You know, we are currently where the company has applied for a PPP loan. You know, maybe someone's like, you know what, we've got uh, sales have dropped so much. Can you furlough me for a little bit? I'll come back to you in first. You know, can you do this? That I, I love being here, but I know it's hard for you to have me and everybody else. Uh, I'm taking, you know, a drain on the company and I can go get the government's money instead right now, you know, but I want to come back because I need work and I need to do this and I love what I do. Feedback can go all sorts of different ways. You can do feedback within your team, feedback within your inventory staff, your accounting staff, your sales staff, your production staff. Again, these are the people that are the boots on the ground. They're doing the work every day. You, you can see the stress in their faces. You can tell when they're not having a great day. You can tell when something went sideways and they're not balancing and they're off by like $25 and they're like, where in the world did it go? More often than not, we need that positive feedback just as much as we need that negative feedback where somebody kind of raises the alarm like, eh, I'm not sure that's the best idea. Like, I don't think it's the greatest idea because of X, Y, and Z. You know, like, but if we do it well, well, then it could be amazing. But we've tried that before, and we did it the exact same way you're suggesting, and it sort of sucked, and we lost a bunch of people. You know, more often than not, you know, there's a lot of people that put in pay for performance in all sorts of departments of their business, which pay for performance can be amazing for people when it's a motivator for them. When they are motivated by pay for performance, you might have people cranking out the work because they're motivated by making the extra cash, by making the extra money. But I've also had clients where pay for performance, like let's say in dismantling, where they wanted to be able to raise the number of cars being produced every day. So they were like, listen, we're going to do pay for performance for dismantling. We want to try and get a car in half a day. And you'd have a handful of the dismantlers crank out a bunch of their cars and they'd hit Wednesday and they've already made their money for the week. They're not motivated by the money. They've made their bills. They're doing their thing. And so Thursday and Friday, their productivity plummets in the toilet and they're just not motivated that way. So in a resort, they went, they hired two more dismantlers to be trained with the other dismantlers. And one of them speaks up and says, hey, we don't have other base for these guys. Yeah. I'm looking for people to produce a car and a half every day. If you don't want to do it, I'm going to find someone that's going to do it after Wednesday. Now, that's harsh. I'm not going to say it's not, 
but it also gets people motivated in a different way to be able to give feedback, to take the feedback, and to look at, well, what is it that I'm going to do to step up to not only have my job, but also do what's expected of me? Because sometimes we expect things of people, but we don't give them the details. We haven't given them the feedback that they need to make concrete change or effective change. Um, and so sometimes it's to our own detriment that sometimes we don't put out there all the details that someone needs from the feedback from the top down. But the feedback from the bottom up, a lot of times they don't want to tell us. You know, if your corporate culture or your company culture doesn't really sustain giving feedback back to you or being open to it, or the first things you say is, oh, you're just wrong, uh, no, take their feedback, mull it over. They have it for a reason, especially everyone that produces for you, shows up regularly, trusted souls, people that are always looking out for your business. They're trying to do that for a reason. They're trying to make it better. They're trying to make it better for you, for them, and to be there for the long haul. So keep in mind that feedback goes both ways, and it can be positive, negative, and neutral. But you want it because that's what's going to make your company continue to grow and change and be there. Um, more simple ideas, uh, more often than not, cash awards are always kind of a king in our industry. We love doing like sales competitions or inventory competitions where, hey, you get, you know, the highest volume of brokers for the week and you get $100 cash or something to that effect. Um, you can definitely do cash awards as ways to kind of motivate the staff to get desired results in terms of sales or productivity or part pulling. Um, but you can also do cash awards just because you did, you know, there are, there are yards out there that um, I had one yard where they did acts of kindness, where basically anytime somebody helped somebody out where they didn't have to, they went above and beyond, uh, it ended up being that they got like a little reward from that. And that's kind of cool. Um, it's definitely one of those things where it's unexpected in a lot of cases. You never know when it's going to happen. Um, and more often than not, you're changing your culture to encourage and activate people being kind to others and going that extra mile and recognizing that extra mile happens. Um, sometimes it's drawings or extra entries in drawings. You know, we have a tendency to around the holiday season to be all about the lottery tickets and giving them out in cards and gift cards and things. But again, like at the beginning, Staff appreciation isn't like a one time a year thing. It's something that should be carried through every month, every week of every day. Um, and even if it's simple little things, just kind of fun natured in terms of awards or drawings or lottery tickets, it doesn't change the fact that it's still something to say, hey, um, we all have an opportunity here. We all have an opportunity, a chance to get this, to earn this, to feel appreciated by this, to know that we did a good job, that we get the attaboy, the pat on the back. And again, it's trying to facilitate those things to show that you're appreciated and that you're valued. If you're just handing out cash to hand out cash, great, give it to us all. But the reality is you want to be able to put it with something that you valued. Swag. Um, you know, again, uh, holiday time. I don't know a yard that doesn't make shirts for their facility or have shirts for their facility or have embroidered shirts or that they don't give out swag during the holiday to their top customers, whether it's pens, hats, clocks, box of chocolate, uh, homemade cookies in a basket. Um, but swag in general does a bunch of different things. Number one, it puts your name and your business out there. And if they're fun swag, like anytime people have gone to URG or gone through the vendors and they've got little pop sockets or cell phone holders, you know, or USB drives, there's always something that somebody needs, right? And you're like, oh, I want that. Oh, chest stick. My lips are dry. It's dry here. We're in Florida. Uh, and so you're walking by. You're like, hey, that's great. Sunglasses. Like, it's amazing all the swag that you can put your name on and put, give it out to people, whether it's your customers, your staff, your friends, family. But you know what? Sometimes you really think about the swag that you're getting and you actually put it out there and you're like, hey, here you go. You know, maybe you've got a chunk of coffee drinkers that are there at your place and you do custom coffee mugs and they're travel mugs. So they get to take them everywhere. Talk about having your name out there. When Starbucks actually used to fill up your own cup versus giving you a paper cup, there you go. 
your name's out there, you're out in public, you're doing your thing. Um, years and years ago, I was lucky enough to be at an award ceremony for one of my yards. And uh, to this day, it makes me laugh. Um, they gave out awards for top sales in like freight, brokering, in stock sales, out of stock, like everything. And then they also gave out little piggies. And the piggies were for the low man on the totem pole where you weren't performing so well. Whether you were the top performer or the lowest performer in all the categories, you had to display at your desk proudly your piggies or your plaques to show that you earned this, whether it was a good earning or not, you had to display it and you had to display it proudly. And if you were asked about it, you needed to talk about it because you were engaging with your customer or whoever had stopped in the shop and was like, oh, what's that? What's that from? And again, when it's for good reason, when it's in those nice little pretty little glass little structures or plaques that have your name all etched into it, someone gave thought to what that would be and what it would show and what it would look like being at your desk. And a lot of times when you get the nice ones, you're like, woohoo, go me. And then there's those that are motivated by getting the little piggies that are like, I'm low man on the totem pole. I don't want to be the low man on the totem pole. I don't want to be the guy that's at the bottom of the list. I still got an award because I came in last, but it's not exactly the award that I want. So I want it to be motivating to get better. I want it to be motivating to move up the food chain. I want to end up putting a fire under someone's butt to say, hey, I do value you, and you're going to show these proud and put them out there, but I also need you to step up your game. I need you to be committed, and I need you to be a part of this, because I'd rather give you one of those plaques than to give you a piggy. So more often than not, uh, you can do things that kind of do double duty. You know, reward your staff because you appreciate them, but also getting your name as a business and a company out there and not just being a work shirt that gets used when they're working on their car at home. Um, again, we talked about flex hours a little while ago and stuff like that, you know, changing the work schedule. Um, but work schedule and PTO or generally pay time off in general, you know, sometimes your simple idea is maybe I give a handwritten note to somebody that's really been just kicking butt and taking names. They've really kind of brought their A game. And not only do I give them a note, but maybe inside that note, there's a certificate to be used for an extra day off somewhere. Where if they need it, here's an extra day off. You get your cruel, you get your PTO, you get what you need, but I'm offering you an extra day off because I valued what you did so much that not only did I take my time to write a note about what was so cool about this, but I gave you a little certificate that said, hey, I'm giving you a bonus day off. A bonus day off could even be a reward for a drawing that was there. You know, you could do so many cool things with that. Same thing with a gift card. You know, gift cards are everywhere, guys. You know, if you're not comfortable with doing the cash and you'd rather buy a whole stack of gift cards, do gift cards and get the bonuses. You know, where you do restaurants, you do the bonus gift cards, and then you can give out gift cards, but not everybody always likes the same food. So sometimes it's nice having variety of the same denominations and giving somebody a choice. You know, have a bucket that's got gift cards in it that don't expire and be like, take your pick, pick one, it's yours, go for it. Um, you know, uh, having like a treasure chest funny enough, you know, having a little treasure chest or treasure box, or, you know, maybe you make something fun with some parts in the yard, you know, you got a weird trunk that you decide to turn into like a funky coffee table that's sitting in your lobby, and it's got a little padlock on it, and every once in a while you get to unlock that little padlock, and someone's to go fishing for a prize of whatever it is that's in your treasure chest. They could be gift certificates, they could be coupons for all sorts of things, they could be random jokes, they could be tchotchkes, they could be swag. And again, you don't have to have a box to do that, but there's a lot of people that love to gamble and spin wheels and do all sorts of things just to kind of feel that warm and fuzzy. When it comes to staff appreciation, you are the person giving the warm and fuzzy to someone else. It's not just chance or luck. It's you doing it for someone else. 
Um, I mentioned food before. There are plenty of yards that do quarterly barbecues and food, whether it's a customer appreciation meal or staff appreciation, company happy hours, maybe taking everyone else to a nice dinner because maybe we had one of the best sales weeks we've had all year, or maybe even just a quarterly dinner or some kind of potluck where everyone just gets together and we all say, thanks. We did great. We did awesome. This is amazing. Um, pizza Fridays, buying lunch. You know, one thing we need to think about is that you might do food once a week. You might buy lunch every day. But if you're doing it every day all the time, then it loses its significance in terms of appreciating your staff. You got to change it up. You got to kind of mix it up so that way it's not complacent. If you have kids out there, routine is key, but if they're used to that as their routine, they take it for granted. They take you for granted, and you're like, hey, where's my thank you? Where's my you're welcome? Well, same thing. We can do such cool things for our staff and for each other, but we do need to be able to put it out there that it's not a given. Unless you actually said, hey, I am supplying food for all of you every day of the week, then that's a given. But otherwise, change it up. Buy lunch every once in a while. If there's a lunch pool, every once in a while, just pick up the bill. Just be like, I got it. We're good. And sometimes you're just putting it out there for different reasons. Uh, again, staff recognition, department recognition. If you have staff meetings where you guys all meet in the morning, whether it's your sales team, inventory team, uh, quarterly the entire team, monthly the entire team, pull out a couple amazing events that happened for the business for some of your staff members, for an entire department, and put it out there and tell everybody about it. Scream from the rooftops. Be like, Dylan did this amazing thing and he's awesome. And this is why. Give him a pat on the back. If you didn't know this happened, this is what happened. Um, take advantage of it. Because again, putting it out to your peers, you're showing that you valued it, that it mattered, that you saw it, that you recognized it. And it's just not just the one-on-one -on -one with someone else. Um, I am, uh, I'm going to kind of prove through this last little piece. Um, sometimes staff appreciation can turn into games. Um, gamification, which is a word that's uh, been out there for a while for different things, whether it be learning, business, just interactions. Um, gamification in our industry doesn't exactly happen all as regular as we want. We have a tendency to do cards with our sales team, maybe poker chips, maybe different things like that. But you can turn any kind of reward system into some kind of game. Um, you can take their feedback for what the rules are, what the items are, and it can be that competition and collaboration amongst the staff to develop what that's going to look like. Um, this is a little different than general staff appreciation. It has more to do with the fact that it's a, a way to kind of inject fun and engagement into your culture. You know, your staff, if you don't do any staff appreciation or any of the things that I talked about today, if you decide to start doing that, they're going to kind of look at you funny. Like, uh, are, are they dying? Like, are they okay? Like, did something happen? Did they have a health scare? Like, what's happening? Like, this is weird. I don't know what to do here. This is weird. Uh, so sometimes implementing a aspect of gamification into how you're setting your benchmarks for pay for performance or goals that you have for your company can be an easy way to transition from that into other forms of staff appreciation. Um, gamification also gives fast feedback to your staff on if they're doing well or not, um, whether it's peer driven or company driven. You also happen to have um, the ability to kind of level things up where if they are all meeting the goals and they're doing it, whether it's solo goals or team goals, um, you can then level things up, be like, oh, you hit that, no big deal. All right, well, let me bring it up a notch. Um, and you can keep doing that. You can also end up doing stuff in gamification where people earn points for their acts of kindness and for them going above and beyond and for doing different things and that they can take those points and cash them in for things like pay time off, uh, leaving an extra hour early, um, you know, having a long weekend, uh, getting a bonus, whatever it may be. Um, you know, you think of like credit cards with their points, right? You know, you can get your cash back bonus. Well, how about coming up with something that's a quick and easy thing that rewards your staff for doing what they do? 
and then they can turn those points in for something else. Um, it also is another way to grail's community as long as it doesn't become stagnant, as long as people aren't taking it for granted, and it doesn't become so repetitive that everyone's like, oh yeah, uh -huh. you want it to be fun, engaging, and you want above all else for them to feel good that not only did they walk in the door for their job every day, but they left their worries at home and they're there to engage with you and everyone else. Those things are big, especially right now. And I know you all feel it. I all you know you all know it because between work being stressful, home being stressful, and worrying about your loved ones, having a level of engagement to appreciate each other as humans and as coworkers and peers is something that we all need right now. So nothing is perfect. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you need to be able to establish how much you value your staff, their, their contributions every day of the year. You need to be able to make it personal. You need to make it relevant and timely. And that's where you need to start. You need to say, what can I do to make that person feel good? How does that apply to them? How does that make them feel? How does it make them feel like, oh, yeah, it's just work? Or does it make them say, oh, my gosh. They really like me here. They appreciate me being here. They want me here. Because I kid you not, appreciating others and not taking them for granted goes so far. It really does. You know, I, like I said, I've given uh, versions of this presentation in the past um, in Australia at URG several years ago. Um, I've done it at a yard. And it always amazes me on how sometimes people do some of the things that I talked about. And sometimes they're like, I didn't think about half of those things. Because I do. I take for granted my people. I take for granted what they do. I pay them. I expect them to show up. I expect them to do the work. But you know what? When we look at each other and we decide to say, I'm going to give you a little bit of my time. I'm going to give you a little bit of my energy. And I'm going to make it important for you. People are amazing at what they do, and you can't put a price tag on it. So I thank you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to post any questions. Kristen, I don't know if we have any. Um, and I'm also going to put my contact information up for those that are interested. But I definitely appreciate you guys attending my session today. So thank you very much. And I appreciate URG for doing the, the virtual conference for the week. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. That was such a great and helpful presentation. I know I enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions, we don't have any just yet, but there is a Q&A box as well as a chat function. So we'll leave that open there for just another minute or so. Thanks, Kristen. We can also kind of make this a forum as well. Like what are, what are you as a yard doing? Um, maybe that's not something that Jen mentioned, but what's, what are something that you guys are doing right now during the midst of the chaos? What are you guys doing to help your staff feel appreciated? That may be another great way to kind of get you guys to open up as well. I agree. You know, sometimes it's looking at what we've done personally and say, Hey, this is what we've done. Um, So summer, we are buying lunch on Fridays. That's awesome. I'm I'm sure that your your staff really appreciates that. Um. Uh, Vicky ended up saying we bought lunch for customers and employees. So we got another lunch one. Tell Ryan Falco I appreciate him. <laughs> I have no doubt, Sean, that he appreciates you too. Anyone else have anything out there? Um, we are going on our fifth week of buying daily lunches. That's a lot of lunches, and rightly so. You know, you're all you're all kind of they're together, kind of engaging each other. Uh, 
I will tell you that um, with my team, um, we've had our meetings. We, we have kind of our staff meetings on what our plans are, what our stuff is, but we also devote time to kind of joke around a little bit to talk about what's going on, um, whether it be family staff, personal staff, um, and, and we just kind of have those kind of like brain breaks where it's nice to kind of just be personable, right? You know, my team in essence is all virtual for those that haven't interacted with me, but my team is a virtual team. And so we, we kind of chat probably periodically throughout the day. Maybe we make a phone call, but when we have our team meetings, we try and be a little jovial and we mix kind of work with that dynamic of getting to engage because when you work with great people and they are excited to be there or they're excited about what you're doing, it can be super fun, you know, and it's nice to be able to have that break where it's not just all work all the time and it's not so stressful. Definitely. I, Anyone I else? agree. I don't see any other questions. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. But Jen, thank you so much again. Like I said, we really appreciate your time and your session, um, as well as everybody else that's participated. So thanks so much again. Um, everybody else, we'll see you in the morning. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.